Right guys, how are we? Welcome back to another video. My name is Jacob McDonald, this is my YouTube channel, and today I bring you a video as a rugby player reacting to the most disastrous, and that's in capital letters, football league ever. The most disastrous football league ever, and that's interesting. You know, this video was created by uh, a guy called KTO, Carlston the Oracle. Um, I'm assuming his first name's Carlston, I wouldn't know. Either way, this video was created in 2017. I started following the league in 2018, and since then, there's been a couple of, there's been, you know, the 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 the, the AAF, there's been the XFL, there's been the NFL, of course, um, and I, I, you know, I, I I tend to I tend to think that there's been another one too. Either way, guys, this is the strangest league ever, aka the most disastrous football league ever it's seven minutes and 27 seconds long i have absolutely no idea what we're going to see here and that's that's what makes reaction videos you know uh reaction videos you know um at the end of the day if you've seen it before it doesn't doesn't mean as much so meet the most disastrous football league ever let's get into it disastrous over 40 years ago, Jesus a man Christ, by the name is that of Donald Trump, or is that <laughs> fuck me dead? <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Of Gary Davidson, announced on October 7th, 1973, world football the league. creation of the world 1974. Football league. Well, I don't know. It was going to be that far back, for God's sake. It was going to be a 12-team format that was set to kick off in July of 1974. Honestly, this seemed like the perfect time to compete with the NFL. In the spring of 1974, players were threatening to go chops. on strikes due to disagreements Look at with those NFL chops. owners. Even if it seemed small, this startup league had a fighting chance. Hi, I'm Earl Herman, and welcome to the new game in town, the World Football League. Last night at approximately 8.08 p.m., this football was kicked off in Orlando, Florida, launching the start of the WFL. Well, it seems likely. I mean... This league claimed it was going to take American football onto a worldwide stage, with their championship game being called... The Look, I'm going to say one thing right here, right here, right now. I am so very interested in seeing how far The Rock aka Dwayne Johnson can take the XFL this year, right? So there's been training camps all over the world, all, all all over the country, sorry, all over the US, and Dwayne Johnson has been at every single one. Can you imagine going to an XFL tryout and actually seeing Dwayne Johnson in the flesh? I mean, he's six foot four, he's 270 pounds, and that doesn't really mean anything, because at the end of the day, he's 50 years old, and he probably couldn't run a fucking five five second 40 yard dash. But at the end of the day, he is bringing another he's bringing some you know he's bringing something different to the world of american football he's bringing the xfl back in 2023 but we're not talking about 2023 we're talking about the 1970s and we're talking about the world bowl world bowl yet the furthest the wfl ever reached was placing a team in hawaii get this they were called the hawaiians i just thought some of these team names were odd the birmingham americans the Detroit Wheels, the Philadelphia Bell, and a variety of others. Jeepers Creepers. Oh, look. That's, that's, what? The Houston Texans. The Houston Texans. I did see that. Yeah, I did see that. Interesting names. I mean, this is the 1970s, let's be honest. The internet hadn't even been fucking invented. Um, why is it the most disastrous football league ever? Well, time yeah, to tell. The modern NFL expansion team would later adopt the Chicago name. Fire. There's actually I don't a mind few that. others that have stuck I in the I don't mind sports. that at all. The Charlotte actually. Hornets, the Memphis Grizzlies, and the Chicago Fire. What? There was quite a bit of differences Charlotte between Hornets. the World Football League and the NFL. Here are some of the differences. Overtime was divided into two halves of seven and a half minutes. Each starting with well, a look, kickoff. Well, look, there's never really... There's, look, if, if it's an overtime game, I mean, that's... That's an anomaly. There's not really that many overtime games, but if it was, it was divided into two halves of seven and a half minutes, each starting with a kickoff by one of the teams. The complete, the complete overtime was always played. Okay, so that doesn't mean that the first score wins the game. It's going to be 15 minutes of, of the best. I don't mind that. Off by one of the teams, which I personally think this is a better system than yeah, what the NFL too. has today. 
On the field, the WFL went with yellow footballs and flashy uniforms. The league also wanted to experiment with color-coded pants based on player positions. This never really took off, but that would have been something. At the end of the season, they presented the MVP with a cash prize of $10,000. They actually placed it on center field in $1 bills. But my favorite- 1970? $10,000? That could have got you a fucking house. Favorite thing has to be what they used to measure first downs. Instead of sticks and chains, they used a device called a dicker rod. Apparently designed for convenience, the device was two and a half yards long. It only needed one person to run it, instead of a full chain crew. Imagine a ball carrier gets tackled close to the first down, and the announcer's gotta be like, it looks to be real close, here comes out the dicker rod. Because finding three people to run a chain crew isn't all that difficult, <laughs> Sadly, the dicker that guy in the middle was thinking, "What am I? What? What does what my life come to? What, what am I doing?" <laughs> I've never caught on. Two and a half yards. To build up a two and a half yard measuring stick. I'm not quite sure how that works, but either way, the teams in the beginning, the league held a college draft. The first six rounds were held on January 22nd, 1974, with the remaining 30 rounds two weeks later. For a startup league, the WFL actually had excellent talent. A lot of dudes spent time in the NFL, whether it was before or after this league. Just to name a few- well, it sounds like the AAF, really. Alfred Jenkins became an all-pro receiver for the Falcons. Jack Dolben started in a Super Bowl for the Broncos. In my last video, I mentioned Hall of Famer and reigning Super Bowl MVP Larry Zonka and a few of his teammates played in the WFL. Zonka said he was getting paid 50k a year to play for the Dolphins, and when the WFL offered him 3.5 million over two years, he couldn't say no. Another Hall of Famer who joined the league <laughs> was Ken Stable. Who's, sorry, who, sorry, okay, yeah, the contracts are one thing, but who's putting up the money? And you ever heard of Vince Papali from the movie Invincible? He actually got a start in the WFL and made the first catch in league history. To kick off the inaugural season, the WFL showed major promise. Early attendance numbers were actually very impressive. Celebrities were even showing up to games. Names like Burt Reynolds and Elvis Presley. The Philadelphia Bell po Elvis Presley? Tell you what, that's the first time I've ever heard the likes of Elvis Presley being involved with the game of football. But this is the 70s. More than 55,000 for He's probably eating a peanut butter sandwich, right? Their home opener. And over 64,000 for their second home game. But this turned out to be pseudo success. The league found out later, the team had been lying about how many tickets they had sold. It turned out the team had only sold 13,000 in their first game and just over 5,000 in the second. Okay, well how can you get away with telling people you've sold 64,000 seats. They had just let thousands of people pour into the game for free. This ended up turning away <laughs> okay. investors and sponsors <laughs> that and works. completely ruining the league's credibility. This was probably the turning point of this league. There was a game later for the Bell that season where they only had 750 fans show up. Here's the truth about teams in the WFL. Several of the 12 teams paid way less than the original franchise fee required. This resulted in teams being completely underfunded and not being able to meet the most basic necessities. Here are some sad and harsh realities of some of these teams. Only three teams could even pay their players every week. The Florida Blazers lived off of McDonald's meal vouchers after not being paid for three months. Well, hey, I don't mind McDonald's, but... Well, that must have been the early days of McDonald's, to be honest, back in the 70s. I mean, there's a guy who's, who's, who's eaten a Big Mac every single day for 40 years. And he hadn't even started back then. The Portland Storm were reportedly being fed by sympathetic fans. When the Hornets couldn't pay their laundry bill, they had their jerseys impounded. So this they is couldn't pretty play. disastrous. The Detroit Wheels didn't have enough money to buy. A is it as disastrous as the AAF? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Athletic tape. They ran out in the middle of a game. And luckily for them, there was a guy who donated <sighs> enough for them to finish the game. No athletic there were tape. multiple teams who relocated mid season. One of them being Jacksonville, which was the team that was supposed to host the World Bowl. Due to this, <laughs> they had to try and relocate the championship game. And the start wait, of the wait, playoffs look at didn't names. go much better. The Hornets, the second place team in the East, only sold a thousand tickets for their first game. And due to not reaching financial oh, requirements, that is dropped out of the postseason. How the hell can you only sell a thousand tickets for a game? Doesn't matter where you are in the States. Surely, surely. There's going to be over a thousand people that want to want to see a football game live. I mean, really? Entirely. 
In what's supposed to be the climax of the season was truly mediocre at best, the World Bowl between the Americans and the Blazers. Both teams hadn't been paid in weeks. The Americans almost didn't show up to the game until they were promised rings if they won. The stadium wasn't even half full. It was just not the most hyped up of games. The Americans ended up winning. And while they were celebrating on the field with their trophy, the Sheriff's Department was going through their locker room confiscating everything they could find. And literally right after their celebration, they had their uniforms repossessed to help pay off team debts. Oh my god. Somehow the league came back the next season and didn't show You're kidding me. It came back the next season? Improvement. Even though they had more NFL talent, they had less teams and the league was just less relevant. And the WFL folded before the Look, US. man, at the end of the day, you know, I don't even know if it was the AFL or or the NFL back then. But um to come up against the juggernaut that is known as, you know, the NFL these days, it's it's I mean <laughs> Why? Why would you? Why would you? Is it to make money? Is it to give other players more opportunity? Um, you know, the lesser players to, you know, an opportunity to sort of make, make a name for themselves to, to then get back into the NFL? Why would you? Why actually would you? And lo and behold, this is the most disastrous football league ever. Years later, with old stadiums left in ruins, in a last desperate attempt Sad, for a merger, it? the Memphis owner filed a lawsuit against the NFL arguing they had violated antitrust laws and should be allowed to be in the NFL. They didn't win the case. Ironically, with a league that wanted to be known for more than football in America and expand worldwide, their only champion ever would be a team with the nickname Americans. I think the last five games we didn't get paid for. Um, we continued to play with reservations. Uh, Bad for some of the other kids there. A lot of guys play for free. You know, I guess it's a tough game to play for free. Mm, it certainly is. It certainly is. It's a tough game, and it was a tough. It's a tough game today, and it's a fucking tough game back then. And if you're playing it for free, and I, look, I've made this famous quote saying, "Look, I wouldn't take that hit for a million dollars." You know, that's that's the straight up truth. I, I would I wouldn't take the hits that these guys do for a million dollars, and that's why they take it for five million or ten million. And to take it for free? Nah. That's not right. That is not right. Either way, guys, that is the most disastrous football league ever. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching. I'm going to get out of here because I've got plenty more videos to watch. In fact, the next one is going to be titled The Game the NFL Wants You to Forget. And I'll see you then. Cheers, guys. and. Peace out.